Now, how do you sell tonight? Road safety ads. We start with a hint of nostalgia. This is how they used to do it back in the 1940s. Boy, he was lucky. Particularly lucky. Look who's coming to pick him up. Hey, aren't you John Bradman? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now listen, boys, you know I like playing cricket as well as you do. But if you want to play for Australia, there's something you must not do. Practice on the road. The park's the place for that. You know, Don made 300 against those kids in that backyard. <laughs> Every year in Australia, there's 600,000 reported crashes, 200,000 injuries and 1,600 road deaths. Road safety advertising is a serious business. Todd, when you get an account like this, where do you start? The first thing we do is get a history reel, which is the last 20 years of advertising for road safety for this particular uh, uh, state. And I sat there, I've been warned, I was warned not to do this, but I sat there for 95 minutes and looked at variations on death, injury, sadness and sorrow and the second thing I needed to do was book a psychiatrist uh, because not only was I uh, slightly depressed for a week and they had warned us not to do this but I was also paranoid driving. Taking on a, a, a road safety campaign for an agency is a big important responsibility. Not easy. In that context it must be bad. So let's look at the kinds of strategies safety ads use to affect our behaviour. We'll start with the best known tactic, shock. And yes, if you have a sensitive disposition, that's a warning. All right, Dan, before we get to what it's about, I mean, how do you make an ad like that? I mean, that's a real crash, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, the best way to make a stunt look real is to do it for real. So when you see a stuntman come crashing through a window, that's real glass. And what we do is we, we put a small explosive charge on the glass, and just before impact, the glass explodes and the guy comes through. The same with that. You know, you want to make a combi look like it's crashing into a truck, you crash a combi into a truck. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, uh, that adds about so much more than shock. You know, I th you, you look at moments where, you know, the girlfriend who wakes just before the impact, yeah. you know, and the truck driver slump after the impact, that adds about emotion as much as it is about shock. In New Zealand a couple of years ago, an agency came up with poster ads that they tucked under the windscreen wipers of cars parked around primary schools. So when you got into the driving seat, this is what you saw. Now, that's extremely confronting to me. Uh, Bridget, did that get a lot of attention in New Zealand at the time? I think it did get a lot of attention, but the really interesting thing about this is actually how it came about. And what happened was uh, police had a look at when most speeding tickets were handed out. And what they actually found was the highest percentage of speeding tickets were handed out first thing in the morning and around mid-afternoon. And on closer inspection, they found that most of the people getting those tickets were either parents rushing to school to drop the kids off or rushing in the afternoon to pick them up. So imagine you're at work, ah, you're running late for a meeting, you jump in your car, plant the foot, get to school, wicked, run in, grab little Johnny, come out and bang, you're hit in the face with the consequences of your actions. Russell, you're, you're a father. What if you'd been in a car and your kids had seen that? Yeah, I don't really like it, to be honest. I, I, I mean, I've got a really practical problem with it. I think it would be. I think you would take it off the windscreen before you actually had the impact of it, because when you walk up to your car and there's something across where you're about to drive, you just take it off. You think it's a fly for the local disco. Um, I, I just. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time since you've been to a disco. <laughs> Nice uh, this, would, this, would, this must be a flyer for the local disco. <laughs> I hope they still play Roll Out the Barrel. I, I, I like it. I, I think most kids, most kids nowadays have, you know, probably killed, dismembered and chainsawed 50 people before lunchtime in video games. Uh, so if my kids saw that, I would actually uh, just talk about road safety. I'd use it as an opportunity to talk about it. A squashed brain on a, on a windscreen is not that shocking anymore to young children. I don't find it all that shocking. I'm not sure I would have approved it, though. And, I, and the reason I wouldn't have approved it is I think kids seeing that image is probably more likely to piss mothers off yeah. than to have them reevaluate their perceptions. Yeah. And I think when you're trying to slow people down in the school zone, the, the last thing you want to do is make the chick behind the wheel of the Land Cruiser cranky. Yeah. <laughs>